Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Thailand Country Briefing Session, Arts for Change. My name is Jay Pacharawi Panprawat. I am Head of Arts and Creative Industries at the British Council Thailand, and I will be emceeing for this session. We have arrived at day three of the Partner Southeast Asia Arts and Culture Matters event, and I hope you have found the previous sessions insightful and beneficial. This Thailand session is packed with sharings and insights from policymakers, creative hubs, and artists. If you have any questions for the speakers afterwards, please feel free to share them in the chat. Our team will pick up your questions for Q&A later. And please also don't forget to answer our polls so that we know what you think of our session today. Without further ado, I would like to ask Helga Stilmarker, British Council Thailand's country director to give you an introduction about the Thailand Arts for Change session today. Please welcome Helga. Hi, hello, Sarwadika, everyone, and a very warm welcome to uh, from the British Council Thailand. Uh, very, we're delighted you're able to join us for our Thailand country briefing session. Um, I have the pleasure of being the country director in Thailand since January this year. So to date, I have seen a, a Thailand through a bit of a COVID lens that perhaps hasn't been um, the Thailand um, uh, previously, but even so, I have in my time seen the rich creativity, the amazing cultural heritage and entrepreneurial spirit um, that, that shines through um, the country. I was also pleased to see that um, the creative economy features prominently in the national Thailand 4.0 or 4.0 uh, strategy, which is the country's 20 year plan to, to move the country towards a knowledge based society and also is one of the pillars of the BCG, the Biocircular Green Model, that also underpins the country's development. I invite you all to come and visit the Thailand Pavilion if you haven't already done so, where you will see the amazing programs that the British Council Arts team, which is Jay, Arm and Nu, um, have, have put together over in recent years, um, particularly um, uh, working on crafts, creative cities, and also you'll see the magic that happens when um, Thai and UK artists have collaborated. You'll also find some research reports, and we also have some current or some uh, about to be published research that we're also very excited about to share with you. And that um, is on creative aging that was mentioned in the plenary. We have one uh, coming up on disability arts, as well as social impact in uh, creative hubs. And we're also taking part in the regional uh, cultural heritage for inclusive growth research. So we're very excited about that. So today we are here um, to uh, focus on the theme, uh, which is arts for change. And that is to reflect a trend that has, has taken place over recent years, where, young, where Thai artists and creative professionals, as well as networks, have been pushing the boundaries of their work to instigate social change across the country. We have divided the session into three sections. So first we'll hear from policymakers. We're delighted to have the deputy permanent secretary from the Minister of Culture, uh, the deputy director of the Creative Economy Agency in Thailand, both giving us the, uh, an overview of the policies and the strategic direction going forwards. We then move on to uh, creative and cultural districts where we have hub leads giving us their thoughts on how their creative networks can bring sustainable and positive change to the cities, districts, and, and local creative economies where they're working. And last but certainly not least, we have an amazing group of artists and creative professionals from Thailand who will be sharing how their different practices can create impact at various levels, both individual, uh, community, as well as the society as a whole, and how arts really can be an important agent for social change in Thailand. So we hope you find the session interesting and inspiring. And most of all, you come away having learned something new, that you've deepened your understanding of the Thai context. And, and also that this session sparks ideas for how you can uh, engage um, with the country and, and the context that we're very, very happy to facilitate 
um, that happening. So let's begin our journey with a very short video of four UK artists who will be sharing with you the impact they feel their engagement with Thai artists has had, both on them personally and on their organizations. Enjoy. My name is Carol Sinclair and I'm a ceramic artist and a creative project manager for an organisation called Applied Art Scotland. And the impact can really be described um, in the words inspirational, transformational and effective. Because working with the British Council has really allowed me to connect with individuals and communities and those connections are really much more um, considered and meaningful because they've been made through the, the knowledge and expertise of the British Council staff. Hello, my name's Alison Welsh and I'm a design consultant. For most of my career I was at Manchester Metropolitan University where um, I headed up the BA fashion course for many years. I worked on the Thai Loop project and for me, the Tyloo project was about exchanges. It was about exchanging experiences, skills and ideas, about mutually working together and learning together. It was about knowledge exchange. Hi, I'm Scott Wilson and I'm Professor of Composition and Electronic Music at the University of Birmingham. I'm working with Pia Watt, Lou and Arpa, Sir, and Sati Ensemble in Thailand. Uh, our three words we came up with were diversity, creativity, and sustainability. And just thinking about creativity, um, I think it's been great in this project, just uh, not only different embracing and learning about and sharing different cultural ideas about creativity, but having to find new ways um, to be creative um, online because of lockdown and pandemics and, uh, and the restrictions that we have, um, which isn't something that normally has happened very much in music. People normally have to be together and that's been absolutely great. Hello, my name is Sinead O'Donnell. I'm based in Belfast, Northern Ireland, and I have been working with Chumpon Apasuk, who is based in Nan, north of Thailand. The title of our project is Closer Distancing. The project connected us internationally through the lens of visual media and performance art exchange. The key of this collaborative experience was identifying barriers through exploring the potential of virtual and physical space in both locations, bringing feelings of distance closer together through making and paving ways to develop performance art under COVID-19 restrictions. We had a feeling of empowerment to this experience, being together and sharing artistic time together by creating art in the present and for future legacies. I hope you enjoyed the video and learn a little bit more about the collaboration between the UK and Thailand. For the next session, we are honored to, to have key policymakers from Thailand sharing with us the current uh, cultural and creative economy policies and strategic directions. So the first uh, speaker is Mr. Prasop Riangun, Deputy Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Culture. The presentation is on Thailand's cultural policies. It is pre-recorded in Thai, but it has English subtitles. So uh, please enjoy his presentation and don't forget to pop your questions in the chats and then we'll come back to answer the questions later. ถ้าพูดถึงว่าบทบาทของกระทรวงวัฒนธรรมนะครับ
กี่ยวข้องกับการบริหารจัดการทุนที่เป็นทุนทางวัฒนธรรมอย่างไรนะครับจะขออนุญาตยกตัวอย่างเป็นทั้งหมด4ด้านในส่วนที่1คือเรื่องของเกี่ยวกับการรักษาสืบสารวัฒนธรรมจะพูดถึงเรื่องของการเก็บสะสมทุนทางวัฒนธรรมหรือว่าข้อมูลต่างๆว่าที่มีอยู่นั้นนะครับจะดําเนินการอย่างไรให้มีความครบถ้วนสมบูรณ์ยิ่งขึ้นจะรักษาสิ่งเหล่านี้นะครับให้คงอยู่แล้วก็ไม่ให้สูญหายหรือว่าสามารถที่จะใช้ประโยชน์ในชีวิตวัฒนธรรมได้อย่างไรทําให้คนในสังคมมองเห็นแล้วก็เข้าใจคุณค่าแล้วก็รักษาคุณค่านี้ครับมาสร้างเป็นมูลค่าของทุนทางวัฒนธรรมทุนสังคมได้อย่างไรก็คือเป็นมิติที่1นะครับเรื่องของการรักษาสืบสารนะครับส่วนที่2ก็คือกระทรวงวัฒนธรรมจำเป็นจะต้องบริหารทุนในฐานะของการพัฒนาคือนําทุนมาทำนะครับพัฒนาให้ดีขึ้นนะครับโดยเฉพาะทุนที่คนมองไม่เห็นหรือว่าทุนที่เป็นมรดกภูมิปัญญาต่างๆมาพัฒนากลไกวิธีการเพื่อให้เกิดการพัฒนาทุนไปสู่การต่อยอดให้เป็นสินค้าและบริการซึ่งเป็นกรอบการพัฒนาทุนที่3นั่นเองนะครับนำทุนมาสร้างคุณค่าหรือสร้างมูลค่าทางเศรษฐกิจมาทําเป็นสินค้าเป็นบริการหรือว่าต่อยอดให้สามารถที่จะใช้ประโยชน์ในเชิงพาณิชย์ได้นะครับก็กลายเป็นสินค้าทางวัฒนธรรมที่ทั้งคนในสังคมและก็คนในตัวทั่วไปสามารถที่บริโภคหรือว่าอุปโภคบริโภคสิ่งเหล่านี้ได้แล้วก็สามารถเกิดอาชีพเกิดไรายได้ได้ก็เป็นกรอบที่3นะครับทั้ง3กรอบนี้สิ่งสําคัญที่สุดอยู่ที่การบริหารจัดการนะครับก็เป็นมิติกระทรวงวัฒนธรรมที่จะส่งเสริมให้เกิดการบริหารจัดการทุนตั้งแต่ความเป็นเจ้าของว่าใครเป็นเจ้าของเจ้าของนั้นนะครับมาจัดการจัดสรรผลประโยชน์อย่างไรตั้งแต่คนกลุ่มคนหรือว่าในภาพรวมที่เป็นของสังคมหรือประเทศหรือเชื่อมโยงไปสู่นานาชาติโดยสรุปก็คือจะทําอย่างไรให้การบริหารจัดการทุนวัฒนธรรมนี้ครับสามารถที่รับใช้ชีวิตประจําวันสร้างประโยชน์ทางเศรษฐกิจและก็เกิดการอยู่ร่วมกันทั้งเรื่องของเทคโนโลยีเรื่องนวัตกรรมและก็เรื่องของสินค้าบริการต่างๆได้อย่างเกิดประโยชน์สูงสุดได้อย่างไรนั่นคือกรอบของการบริหารจัดการทุนในฐานะที่เป็นกระทรวงวัฒนธรรมครับส่วนในส่วนต่อไปนะครับหลักการที่กระทรวงใช้อย่างไรบ้างนะครับผมขออนุญาตว่าอันแรกเลยเราก็ต้องรู้ว่าเจ้าของทุนก็คือประชาชนนะครับใครเป็นเจ้าของวัฒนธรรมในส่วนไหนไม่ว่าจะเป็นวัฒนธรรมตั้งแต่ท้องถิ่นจนกระทั่งวัฒนธรรมกลุ่มชนวัฒนธรรมของสังคมนะครับกลุ่มเป้าหมายเราต้องชัดเจนว่าเราจะดีฟายกลุ่มเป้าหมายว่าเป็นเด็กเยาวชนหรือว่ากลุ่มต่างๆในโอกาสในสังคมไม่ว่าจะเป็นกลุ่มผู้สูงอายุกลุ่มสตรีกลุ่มชาติพันธุ์หรือกลุ่มเปราะบางอื่นๆรวมถึงแม้แต่ชาวต่างชาติที่อาศัยอยู่ในประเทศไทยก็เป็นกลุ่มเป้าหมายของทุนทางวัฒนธรรมในส่วนที่2เราคํานึงถึงผลประโยชน์ว่าการบริหารจัดการนั้นต้องคํานึงถึงผลประโยชน์ว่าเป็นของใครนะครับผลประโยชน์นั้นได้มาอย่างไรหรือว่ามีการจัดการอย่างไรรูปแบบผลประโยชน์เช่นเรื่องของรายได้เรื่องของความพึงพอใจเรื่ององค์ความรู้หรือแม้แต่เรื่องของความรู้ในเชิงลึกหรือคุณค่าในเชิงจิตใจอันนี้คือผลประโยชน์ที่จะเกิดขึ้นจากการบริหารจัดการทุนทางวัฒนธรรมไม่ว่าจะเป็นเกิดแต่ในภาพรวมของประเทศสังคมกลุ่มชนหรือว่าปัจเจกบุคคลแต่ละคนก็คือเรื่องของเจ้าของและผู้ได้รับผลประโยชน์นั่นเองนะครับในส่วนที่3เราจําเป็นจะต้องมีการจัดเก็บจัดการเรื่องของข้อมูลของทุนทางวัฒนธรรมอยู่ที่ไหนอยู่ที่ใครและเขามีอยู่เขาใช้ประโยชน์อย่างไรเรื่องของทุนเหล่านั้นมีวิธีการดําเนินการอย่างไรส่วนต่อไปคือเครื่องมือในการบริหารจัดการทุนนะครับไม่ว่าจะเป็นฐานข้อมูล Big Data กฎระเบียบหรือว่ากติกาในการจัดการหรือมาตรมาตรการต่างๆที่ใช้ในการจัดการทุนทางวัฒนธรรมนะครับในส่วนต่อไปนะครับมือเครื่องมือแล้วเราจะเป็นต้องสร้างให้เกิดการมีส่วนร่วมความเป็นเจ้าของในการบริหารจัดการนะครับว่าจะมีกฎกติกาหรือว่ากลไกในการบริหารจัดการให้ได้ประโยชน์สูงสุดอย่างไรมีความโปร่งใสความเป็นเจ้าของสามารถที่จะเข้าถึงคนกลุ่มต่างๆได้อย่างไรนะครับหลังจากนั้นเราก็เอากลไกวิธีการอย่างนี้นะครับมาทำเป็นวิธีการบริหารจัดการทุนก็คือเราจะตรวจสอบว่ามีการดําเนินการเรื่องนั้นเป็นอย่างไรเกิดประโยชน์อย่างไรกับคนกลุ่มต่างๆมีการพัฒนามีการปรับหรือว่ามีการสร้างเครือข่ายในการทํางานมีการแลกเปลี่ยนเรียนรู้องค์ความรู้จัดการความรู้มาตรการหรือกลไกในการจูงใจในการปรับรวมถึงเรื่องของการปรับโครงสร้างปรับภารกิจและก็พัฒนาในกลุ่มเป้าหมายการเงินงานต่างๆไม่ว่าจะเป็นกลุ่มศิลปินกลุ่มนักสร้างสารรค์หรือว่ากลุ่มผู้ประกอบการต่างๆก็ทําให้ครอบคลุมทุกมิติรวมทั้งผู้เสพผู้บริโภคด้วยนะ
เราเอาทุนว่าทำมาบริหารจัดการให้เกิดประโยชน์ทางเศรษฐกิจอย่างไรตั้งแต่กระบวนการรักษาสืบสานต่อยอดและถึงขั้นการนําไปใช้ประโยชน์ขอยกตัวอย่างหนึ่งเรื่องการจัดการเกี่ยวกับเรื่องของโนราซึ่งเป็นเรื่องของจิตวิญญาณของคนใต้เป็นศิลปะการแสดงที่มีทั้งองค์ความรู้ซึ่งมีการบันทึกและจัดเก็บไว้นะครับในส่วนที่2ก็คือข้อมูลที่จัดเก็บนะครับมาพัฒนาให้เป็นกลายเป็นศูนย์ข้อมูลเกี่ยวกับโนราเป็นองค์ความรู้ในการจัดการในการแลกเปลี่ยนนะครับในส่วนต่อไปเรานําศิลปินโนราหรือว่าศิลปะการแสดงโนรานะครับมาขึ้นทะเบียนระดับชาติปัจจุบันก็จะขยายผลให้เป็นการขึ้นทะเบียนระดับนานาชาติในเวทีของทางยูเนสโกนะครับก็คือการยกย่องให้โนรานี่เป็นศิลปะการแสดงชั้นสูงที่มาจากท้องถิ่นสามารถเชื่อมโยงไปถึงศิลปะการแสดงระดับนานาชาตินะครับในส่วนต่อไปคือเราเมื่อจากเมื่อขึ้นทะเบียนแล้วเราจําเป็นก็ต้องมีการอนุรักษ์และสืบสานให้คงอยู่ต่อไปเพราะว่าถ้าเราแค่เก็บรักษาไว้โดยไม่มีการสืบสานสูญหายไปทีนี้พอดําเนินการในช่วงนี้แล้วเราจะมาสร้างประโยชน์ทางเศรษฐกิจอย่างไรในส่วนนี้ที่เราทําก็คือว่าเรานำโนรานี่นะครับมาทําเป็นสินค้าเช่นผลิตเป็นภาพยนตร์ก็ส่งเสริมให้มีการเรียนรู้เกี่ยวกับศิลปะโนราผ่านสื่อภาพยนตร์ในขณะเดียวกันก็เป็นการสืบสานแลกเปลี่ยนว่าทำด้วยนอกจากนั้นนะครับก็เอาส่วนที่เกี่ยวข้องกับโนราของงานหัตถกรรมต่างๆก็กลายเป็นสินค้าของฝากของที่ระลึกของโนราและนอกจากนั้นนะครับเมื่อเราดําเนินการเกี่ยวข้องทุกส่วนแล้วโนราเนี่ยเห็นทั้งคุณค่าและมูลค่าสามารถจะนําไปสู่กระบวนการอนุรักษ์สืบสารให้คงอยู่แล้วก็มีความยั่งยืนต่อไปนะครับโนราจะกลายเป็นสีพอตหรือว่าสินค้าทางวัฒนธรรมของประเทศไทยที่มีการสืบสารสร้างสารรค์จําหน่ายในเชิงพาณิชย์ได้ด้วยนะครับกรณีที่1น,นะครับส่วนกรณีต่อไปที่กระทรวงดําเนินการเป็นโครงการพัฒนาสินค้าทางวัฒนธรรมเราเรียกตัวย่อว่าเป็นสีพอตนะครับก็เป็นการนําทุนทางวัฒนธรรมของชุมชนต่างๆนะครับมาออกแบบมาพัฒนาให้เป็นสินค้านะครับการใส่คุณค่าความคิดสร้างสารรค์เข้าไปกลายเป็นสินค้าที่สามารถจําหน่ายได้ในเชิงพาณิชย์เผยแพร่พัฒนาผู้ประกอบการให้สามารถที่จะขายสินค้าเหล่านี้เป็นประโยชน์ของเขาได้นะครับเกิดประโยชน์ทั้งเชิงของพาณิชย์ในเชิงของการขยายผลการดำเนินงานไปสู่เป็นสินค้าระดับนานาชาติได้ในอนาคตนอกจากนี้นะครับปัจจุบันเรามีพื้นที่การแสดงหรือเป็นเป็นที่พื้นที่ของการบ่มเพาะการแลกเปลี่ยนก็คือเรื่องของหอศิลป์แห่งชาตินะครับตอนนี้เราสร้างเสร็จแล้วพื้นที่แห่งนี้จะเป็นพื้นที่ของศิลปินและงานสร้างสรรค์ด้านศิลปะตั้งแต่ศิลปินหน้าใหม่รวมทั้งเรื่องของศิลปินระดับชาติและก็เชื่อมโยงไปถึงนานาชาติได้นอกจากนี้ตรงนี้จะกลายเป็นแหล่งของการซื้อขายงานศิลปะและก็เชื่อมโยงไปยังหอศิลป์หรือว่าเครือข่ายด้านศิลปะอื่นๆทั้งในเอเชียแล้วก็ในระดับนานาชาติต่อไปส่วนอีกอันหนึ่งที่อยากจะกล่าวถึงก็คือเรื่องของคอนเทนต์ก็คือการส่งเสริมอุตสาหกรรมภาพยนตร์และวิดีทัศน์ไม่ว่าจะเป็นเรื่องของหนังละครเกมสื่อต่างๆนะครับสิ่งที่กระทรวงวัฒนธรรมดำเนินการก็คือเราสามารถที่จะส่งเสริมให้อุตสาหกรรมนี้ตั้งแต่กระบวนการคัดเลือกคอนเทนต์มาสร้างเป็นภาพยนตร์มาสร้างเป็นละครหรือว่ามาสร้างเป็นเกมแล้วก็นําไปสู่การเข้าร่วมงานเข้าร่วมเทศกาลในงานตลาดต่างๆสร้างรายได้ให้กับอุตสาหกรรมของวัฒนธรรมของประเทศได้เป็นอย่างมากปัจจุบันนี้ครับเรื่องของภาพยนตร์ละครก็ได้รับการยอมรับทั้งในเอเชียภูมิภาคอื่นด้วยนะครับงานที่เราดำเนินการก็คือเรื่องของการเรียนงานเกี่ยวข้องกับการส่งเสริมอุตสาหกรรมภาพยนตร์ก็จะมีการขยายผลไปเรื่อยๆนะครับในขณะเดียวกันนะครับตอนนี้โลกมีการเปลี่ยนแปลงไปมากเราเรียกว่าเป็นอูก้าหรือว่าเป็นเรื่องของเมตาเวิร์ดที่จะเกิดขึ้นกระทรวงวัฒนธรรมจําเป็นจะต้องพัฒนาสิ่งเหล่านี้นะครับเพื่อให้เกิดการดําเนินงานที่สอดคล้องกับโลกที่เปลี่ยนแปลงโดยใช้เครื่องมือเหล่านี้เป็นเบทีและก็เป็นแนวทางในการขยายผลการเดินบนงานสุดท้ายคือกระทรวงวัฒนธรรมจําเป็นจะต้องสร้างภูมิทัศน์หรือระบบวิทยเวชต่างๆที่เอื้อต่อการส่งเสริมเศรษฐกิจวัฒนธรรมให้เกิดขึ้นในประเทศสามารถที่จะนําไปสู่การสร้างคนสร้างคุณค่าสร้างรายได้เชื่อมโยงกระทรวงวัฒนธรรมกับเรื่องอื่นๆสามารถที่ขยายผลไปยังในและต่างประเทศด้วยครับก็ขออนุญาตพูดเพียงเท่านี้ก่อนก็คือบทบาทของกระทรวงวัฒนธรรมที่เกี่ยวเนื่องกับการดำเนินงานในรอบปีที่ผ่านมาอนาคตที่ดำเนินการต่อไปครับ Thank you very much คุณกระสุน for this insight into Thailand's cultural policies The next speaker for this session
Hello, everyone. I'm Pichit Virankabut from the Creative Economy Agency in Thailand. I'm representing the um, organization today on um, my presentation. So my seven minutes is now. The Creative Economy Agency public organization is under the office of the Prime Minister. Um, it has been developed from the Thailand Creative and Design Center a decade ago. So right now we are the um, main um, organizations to drive the creative economy in Thailand. Um, Thai creative industry in Thailand, we have been divided into um, 15 sector. So there's like cultural base, content and media, um, creative services and products and related industry, which is food, um, medical and um, cultural tourism. So all the um, creative industry in Thailand has been um, doing quite well in a way that we are trying to um, accumulate how we can um, inject on, on the creative capital or in how we can um, uh, talk on the regulations, um, legislations, the limitations, all of these things to unblock and um, expand how it could be um, growth in a way. Um, sorry, I apologize for the tie, but it's easy to understand. Right now, what you're seeing is the um, creative industry growth, growth rate. Um, the pink um, um, arrow um, is higher than the Thai um, GDP of 5.25. Um, in 2017, the blue um, circle is 1.4 trillion baht in, in value. So we are trying to, um, right now maybe is a bit back today, but on 2019 is 1.4. Um, 1.154 trillion baht. So it, it's now above the, the current um, presentation right now, you have seen it. Um, for the uh, highest tree of the Thai creative industries um, that we have been um, researching this index is like the growth of, it's on the three of them is on the right hand side is the um, tourism, um, food and gastronomy and design. So these are the main um, features of the um, Thai creative industries that we indexed this in 2017. Um, there are um, over 800,000 um, uh, creative career pursuing on the, the, the career of, of in creativities. Um, the index of 2017, there will be like um, handicraft, people in advertising, design, um, music, architects in, in the all kinds of category, categories in, in the creative industries. Um, CA vision and mission as my office is, is driving the, the creative economy. We're trying to develop and promote creative business, um, use in, to use innovation and creativity as tools to improve the pro, uh, products and services in order into the world market. So in the three areas that we are looking for is the creative people, the creative product service, and the creative district to combine it as an ecosystem of of Thailand creative economy um, uh, platform. Here are some examples of what we, we, we are doing for the creative people. We have um, four locations across the country. We have um, programs on business consulting, business matching, um, lots of immersive workshops, both on site and online during the pandemic. And um, for the Creative Place, we have been working on the Thailand Creative District Network right now. Over 30 provinces across the country is, is now on the map on um, creative district development. So in a way, we are looking at the big picture of the country and see how we could reconnect 
um, the creative industries, um, creative workers to um, expand themselves into their province and look at how uh, we can nurture um, the district that will be um, in, in the area of their hometown. So we have Design Week across as a tool of the e e economic driven and in across the three regions of Thailand. So right now we are trying to expand a smaller version of a creative festival to be kind of a prototype to see how um, district could be functioning in their own context. Um, lastly, in, in what we are trying to expand is to um, accumulate um, creative information and industrial data. So we are working on how all the uh, 15 creative industries in Thailand on um, what is possible to expand if there have been um, any regulations or legislations that they are having um, problems with, we are listening to them to see what creative economy agency could um, be the enabling factor to, to, to unlock and to talk across um, the organization, the government, um, we're working with the Office of the Nation Economic and Social Development Council. So to see that um, the creative economy will be the engine of the 13 economic and social development plan. And we'll see how um, things could be able to push on like on film industries, on design, or even on um, digital economy like blockchain or NFT. So we are trying to look at possibilities that we could expand and work across, connect with, with um, the region and drive the economy to the best that it could grow. So I will end my seven minutes presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kun uh, Prasop and Kun Pichit, for your presentations. It was a brief session, but I hope that the session had given the audience ideas about the directions of Thailand's creative economy and cultural policies. So now it's time to welcome questions from the floor. Um, if you have any questions for our speakers, please type them in the chat, and then I will be translating for Mr. Prasop, who has joined us now. Okay, so um, in the chat, uh, I've got one question each for each um, speaker. So let me begin first uh, with the Ministry of Culture. This question is for Kun Prasop, the Deputy Permanent Secretary. So I'll um, read the question in English and then I'll um, translate that into Thai for him to answer into Thai and then I'll trans translate back again. So uh, the question for Minister Ministry of Culture is that from the presentation, we see that you've placed a lot of emphasis on cultural capital. So uh, would you be able to um, let let us know what kind of projects the Ministry of Culture is planning in the future in order to address um, this issue about cultural capital. So, and the Katan Prasoka. อ่าอันนี้คําถามนะคะสําหรับท่านประสบนะคะเป็นคําถามเกี่ยวกับเรื่องของขอสวัสดีทุกท่านนะครับก็ขอให้ขอบคุณนะครับที่ทางวิทยาศาสตร์ได้ให้โอกาสทางกระทรวงวัฒนธรรมได้พูดถึงงานที่เกี่ยวข
ภูมิปัญญาที่อยู่ในตัวบุคคลก็ตามตอนนี้โครงการที่เราทําคือเราจัดเก็บฐานข้อมูลครับของทุนว่าทําว่ามีอยู่ที่ไหนอยู่ที่อยู่ที่ใครบ้างนะครับเพื่อ,อนําฐานข้อมูลนั้นมาใช้ประโยชน์ในการสร้างสรรค์สินค้าและบริการทางวัฒนธรรมรวมทั้งเรื่องของการส่งเสริมการเรียนรู้การท่องเที่ยวครับที่ดําเนินการอยู่นอกจากงานที่ทําต่อเนื่องก็คือเป็นการนําทุนวัฒนธรรมมาพัฒนาเป็นสินค้านะครับที่ผมได้พูดถึงนะครับว่าเราเรียกว่าเป็นผลิตภัณฑ์วัฒนธรรมไทยหรือซีพอร์ตนั่นเองนะครับอีกส่วนหนึ่งก็นําทุนเหล่านั้นนะครับมาทําเป็นสื่อคอนเทนต์ต่างๆไม่ว่าจะเป็นเรื่องภาพยนตร์ทีวีละครอันนี้ก็เป็นตัวอย่างของการนําทุนวัฒนธรรมนำมาพัฒนาต่อยอดเพื่อสร้างเศรษฐกิจครับก็เป็นกรณีตัวอย่างที่ดำเนินการครับขอบคุณมากค่ะ So first of all, Mr. Prasad would like to thank the British Council for um, allowing this opportunity for the Ministry of Culture to present about their work uh, relating to the creative industries in Thailand. And uh, regarding the question about cultural capital and what um, projects are relevant to that, he said that as mentioned in his presentation, um, you would see that uh, Thailand. Um, has a lot of cultural capital, both on individuals and on tangible and intangible heritage. So, uh, what the ministry is trying to do now is to try to document the cultural capital and then make a database of that cultural capital in order to use the uh, data to promote um, learning. Uh, and also to promote tourism, and also um, to promote the use of the content that is available to um, turn into products. Uh, so, uh, in his presentation, he he also mentioned a project called Seacot, which is cultural capital of Thailand. So, it's a kind of um, cultural capital product. It is looking at whatever um, cultural capital content is available, and then um, the ministry is. Um, Planning to turn that into into products which can be sold, and also you know this is relating to um, media contents such as for television and for filming as well. Ha, ได้ค่ะขอบคุณมากนะคะ So we would like to go to um, another question for คุณพิชิต So this question for CEA is about the future vision of CEA. So what is in the plan for CEA and and what um, CEA will want to do next? Um, for um, the coming years of CA driving the creative economy, um, from my presentation on um, the triangle of creative people, creative business, and creative district, this is part of the um, foundation to create a uh, creative ecosystem to drive the economy. Right now, we are we are expanding this three circle on um, the creative industry data. Which um, will be accumulating um, data from from the industries. We talk to associations. We talk to um, all the stakeholders to see what are their needs, what are the limitations, what are the regulations that they they would like um, us as a government body to try to work with other government agencies to see how possible it could be um, updated right now. The other part that we are trying to expand is the Creative Information Center, which is will be um, tracking down all the um, data digits and and how um, creative in all kinds of index. Maybe in a short period, maybe we'll see like um, the Creative City Index, the um, Creative Competitiveness Index, things like that will be. In in part of what we're doing, in in the in maybe we step back one one step and see. Um, right now, I think for creative economy to blossom in any country or especially in Thailand, um, right now we are we are trying hard to identify all the enabling factors. We are trying to um, pin down the stakeholder map. We're trying to see um, the value chain. We are trying to identify the creative economy landscape, I, and I believe this is part of all countries across the world will be trying to do. The other part that we are we are we are we are trying to um, achieve is um, the the other side of creative economy is the creative capital. So the soft power of um, Um, the creative people that will be the importantly triggering f 
factor that will be um, steering the ripple effect for functioning on the um, all the factors to work and um, could could push the country's growth to a higher level. So I think it's like working on two both sides, the all the regulations and the other side of of enabling the trigger um, factor on on Thailand's um, creative economy landscape. Oh, thank you very much, Kun Kishit, for that very clear answer. Um, I would also like to apologize. I made a little mistake when I was translating earlier. So uh, the Deputy Permanent Secretary was saying sea ports, um, uh, cultural product of Thailand. So yes, I would like to correct that. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have any more time for this section. So I would like to thank both um, speakers once again for um, sharing with us the directions and the policies of Thailand in terms of um, cultural and culture and creative economy. And next, um, we are going to the next session. Uh, we are going to be hearing from creative hub leads as well as artists and creative entrepreneurs who are using their creativity to make better changes for the society. So um, without further ado, I, I would like to introduce the first uh, panel discussion, which is on creative cities and creative districts in Thailand. The session will be moderated by Professor Joyce Yi from Northumbria University. Joyce has worked with the British Council in Thailand on the research on creative and cultural districts in Thailand. And uh, Joyce will be joined by uh, three other speakers, including Martin from Chiang Mai, Jare from Songkhla, and Nathanit from Bangkok, who are all uh, creative hub leads who are creating impact on their cities through their creative hub work. So uh, please welcome the panelists. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, welcome to the panel discussion on creative cities and creative districts. Uh, my name is Joyce Yi. I'll be the moderator for this session, and I'm delighted to welcome 
three leaders of creative hubs from different cities around Thailand to share with us their thoughts and experiences and reflections. So as a start, um, we'll have a short introduction from each of the speakers and including myself, and then we'll go on to uh, some questions that we'll ask, be asking the panel around um, a bit about the hubs, but also the impact that they're achieving with the work they're doing. So firstly, um, just a short introduction for myself. Uh, as Jay mentioned, I'm Professor Joyce C. I'm a Professor in Design and Social Innovation at Northumbria University. We're based up in the Northeast of UK, but I have worked with the British Council on a project around the creative hubs. Uh, my work is primarily around uh, um, looking at how design supports social innovation. And specifically, I co-founded a, a network called uh, Designing Social Innovation in Asia Pacific. And we bring together on a yearly basis, of course, not with COVID, but um, innovators, social entrepreneurs, designers who are you know, working in the region and supporting uh, impact work. So, um, and I would like to, to introduce Dr. Jare from Songkhla Heritage Trust. Jare, please. Hello, everyone. My name is Jare Sunachat from Songkhla Heritage Trust. And I would like to present about the Songkhla Heritage Trust work that we do in Songkhla, Southern of Thailand. Uh, Songkhla Heritage Trust is the heritage NGOs consists of members from Old Tao, uh, Thai, Thai Muslim, and Thai Chinese. We work together. And uh, stakeholder from uh, uh, government, uh, local government, just as Songkhla municipality, Songkhla province. Our office located at uh, the old, old building, 100 years old rice mill. And this, this rice mill was paint with a uh, red color. People, local people call a uh, red rice mill building. The red rice mill building belong to Kun Rangsi Ratana Akan, and he allowed us to use this building for public. Then uh, this building is really iconic in Songkhla Old Town. Uh, he allowed us to do all activity uh, uh, like a center of teenager and aging people, we do activity together. Uh, the old age like the music. Sometimes they do the festival about the uh, music in all, all, all time. But for teenager, maybe they play skateboard or something like that, really creative, or may, maybe artists. Uh, the last project that we uh, cooperate with the CEA, and the artist from uh, United States is the filmmaker. We just finished filmmaker about the Songkra story. Yes, that is a short uh, presentation from Songkra. That's great. Thank you, Ajahn Jaro. And next we have uh, Martin Vensky Stalin from the Creative Chiang Mai, Thailand. Um, Sorry, Yes, hello, good. Hello, everybody in, in around the world, um, and good evening here in Thailand. I am calling in from Chiang Mai, which is uh, called the Rose of the North of uh, Thailand. Uh, it's about uh, an hour flight from Bangkok and 800 kilometers. And uh, it's a, known as quite a historic city with um, green surroundings and a lot of heritage and culture, distinct culture, um, different to central Thailand. Uh, I work at the Chiang Mai University Science and Technology Park. So that's kind of like a hub or actually trying to create a district around itself. Um, but as we started this um, more science, technology and innovation focused um, hub and initiative, uh, when you look at the structure of Northern Thailand, you notice that, or you will may have, if you've been here, you will see a lot of craftsmanship and other creative industries. So we felt that in order to further develop the city and um, similar kind of context, bringing together private sector, business, education, and civil society um, people. Um, so quadruple helix, maybe some of you are familiar with this term, bringing all these stakeholders together, similar to the science park, why don't we apply it to the creative economy? And then the governor 
uh, signed off on creating this initiative, Creative Chiang Mai, over 10 years ago. And I work at the Secretariat, which is the science park. And we're trying to kind of promote connections within and also from within to outside and outside into the local ecosystem and network so that there are new, new impulses and also that the world knows that uh, what Chiang Mai has. They're not always expecting certain things that Chiang Mai has. And one of the themes of my, my um, presentation and further Q&A will be the diversity that Chiang Mai has. I mean, it's not Berlin or it's not London, but for a medium-sized secondary city in Southeast Asia, it is a lot more diverse than it's sometimes been seen as or understood or known of. So this is something which is a strength and a weakness because sometimes um, certain initiatives or budgets focus on certain things. We're trying to create the dots and the connections. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Martin. And now I would like to invite uh, Kun Natanich to uh, co-founder of Ari Around to introduce himself. Hey, hello, everyone from around the world. I'm Natanich Saidi. I'm a full-time online editor of National Geographic Thailand and also the full-time of co-founder Ari Arau. So Ari Arau is started from the creative friends and neighbors who are living in the neighborhood together and we want to do something better for our world community. So we create Ari Arau, which the Ari is the name of our neighborhood and also in the, in the Thai meaning means kindness. So we want to exchange our Ari Arau around our community. So Ari Arau is a platform that helps connecting people and activities in their neighborhood uh, to encourage pro work and strengthen the power of community and to create a sustainable urban living through exchanging ARI or ARI COI, which means kindness by using ARI COIs as a token system. First, we launched our project at uh, Bangkok Design Week on July 20 and 21, and we got a very good result from, from our neighborhoods and and people around Bangkok. So we get many uh, our user on the application and we are about to expand our model. We, we want to develop our model into more di dimension of living and want to expand our pilot project to another urban living around country or, or the abroad. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much. Thanks to all the speakers for their uh, really good introduction. I just want to start the, um, the panel session perhaps by inviting the speakers to talk a little bit about the, the, the context of where they're operating in the city and the, the neighborhood and the place-based nature of that. Just because obviously the audience might not have ideas about the differences between you know, Ari in Bangkok, Song Kla down in the south, or Chiang Mai. So um, can I start by inviting Martin to perhaps talk about it from a city Chiang Mai perspective, and then we will move on to, um, to, to Jare and then Nin. Sure. Um, so the initiative that I'm working with is really kind of quite city-wide. Um, in, and uh, the city has different um, districts or areas one is known more for, for like, for example, the Silver Street, um, Warlai, and the other area is a new and upcoming area, um, Chiang Mai area, um, which used to be quite quiet, but recently has been through a renaissance of, of, uh, of, of locals and people that moved in and, and quite well integrated, I would say, overall. And then we had some areas near Niman, which started off as being quite trendy, but then got off taken over a little bit by tourism. So we have to see this with, with COVID, but there are different areas for a medium sized city. It's quite interesting and different people working, sometimes locally embedded with, with working on digital nomads and IT and more startups in other areas. It's more, it's, it's different. And then the city center is the, the sort of older heritage um, related um, groups um, that worry about heritage, but also about livability and dealing with traffic and, and all these sort of things. And um, we're trying to kind of create a visibility of all the different groups that are working in Chiang Mai and the different um, hubs and, and units, because sometimes um, more than one is working on very similar topics. 
And also we found uh, that um, people from outside of Thailand, when we started a network with other Southeast Asian um, secondary cities, they said it's quite, even within Thailand, it's quite hard sometimes to know who to turn to within Chiang Mai. So how can we create this better visibility? They don't even have to go through our tiny little secretary yard, but how can they, when we create that visibility, um, reports and databases and events that they can then connect directly to a gallery or to a, a converted um, ice factory that's now a creative hub in, in the old town and so forth. So we're trying to sort of um, create the connections at a city level. That's great. Thanks, Martin. Really interesting work that you're doing. Um, Jerry, would you like to talk about a bit about, you know, Songkla Heritage Trust and why it came about and actually what role it plays in the regeneration of the old town in Songkla? Yeah, thank you. Uh, the, the Songkla province have uh, tried to push uh, Songkla old town to be one of like a, a worried place in the future, something like that. Then aim of Song Clarity Trust and another hubs are focusing on uh, architecture, uh, urban heritage, uh, conservation, uh, and find the new thing. Uh, instead, the, the old house and a new function suitable for Song Kra in model age, such as keep original facade but change inside function from housing to be cafe hotel or office for young generation use. Uh, and we have project about the uh, decoration uh, facade or, or keep the artists work together with local people decorate the, the road. This uh, Song Karate plus, uh, Trust now, uh, we start, we beginning the project uh, from 2014, but today, we have uh, three hubs, three small hubs work together with three creative cafe to do like uh, to do this project together. That's great. It's it's growing from strength to strength from when it started. So it's good yes. to sort of see initiatives, more and more initiatives, and a lot of people enthusiasm for creative activities as well. Um, I would like to also now invite Nim to talk about on a kind of smaller scale, neighborhood scale within Bangkok in Ari about kind of um, the, the context of the history of the, of the neighborhood and obviously why Ari Around came about. Yeah, actually, uh, although we are in Bangkok, but and, and in the middle of Bangkok, but we are like the, the neighborhood that stay here since like 1960 and they are very own historical story that that's very that untold. So we would like to bring this alive again and be recorded in the Bangkok history. So our three pillars of Ariara included community, technology, and creativity. That is like the base of working in this generation. So we combine these three things into Ariara that uh, we will use in like I recall that I said a token system as a medium to connect the people maybe in the condominium, either new living or the neighborhood people who living in the house. And if you know that Ari is very famous in cafe or hopping lifestyle for very for teenagers right now. So I would like to connect them to know more about Ari, not only just not only just the hopping or the good place in this side, but I would like them to understand how we are living and how we can like make the communities more sustainable by we can like keep keep the essence of living in in this neighborhood and help each other to make this this area uh, good for everyone. So area around happens. That's great. I think that's that's really super interesting and a really interesting initiative with the Ari coins and how you're also linking that to sustainable behaviors and initiatives. So um, and it sounds as if there's lots of history and heritage to draw from. And I think that's also a very similar connective, you know, from all the three different sites as well. I, I, um, 
just as a reminder, if you have any questions for the panelists, please make sure you put that in the chat and we'll have a Q&A session um, at about five minutes before we, we end. So I wanted to also um, put a question to the to the panelists around because we heard in, a, uh, in the first uh, uh, session of this this uh, briefing around a policy, so the central government policy in supporting creative arts and creative activities. So I wanted to find out from yourselves um, what do you think has been the role of the or central government in supporting your um, your initiative and in helping you deliver your impact. So perhaps. Maybe I go back to Martin first and then back to the same sequence, if that's easier. Um, well, that's a, a tricky question, but if you know a little bit about um, uh, Thailand, it is quite a centralized country and uh, a lot of the government's budget goes into um, central Thailand. Uh, so, uh, or certain regions like the Eastern Seaboard for industrial economic development. So the regional um, urban centers like Kongen and Chiang Mai uh, and others are not um, receiving that much um, support. And also in terms of administrative structure, it's often quite um, centralized. We do have a few organizations like the CEA or TCDC um, that have opened up offices in in Chiang Mai and others, and they're doing a lot of good work, but sometimes it's also not specifically them, but in general, sometimes the um, central agencies coming to work um, in, in, Chiang, in Chiang Mai, in our case, um, have certain preconceptions about what should be done and how it should be done, or they want to have the ownership, um, whereas actually there might be more groups that are working on this and they should also be included rather than a subset of groups in the local ecosystem. So um, I think there's a lot of potential for, for more um, for funding. So like there was a journalist that once wrote that Chiang Mai is like, um, uh, like part of Paris, it has so many galleries and, 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 and so, but I can tell you that all these galleries are coming from private money, not from government support. <clears throat> and uh, when, uh, uh, we, we were a little bit jealous when Joe Sedek came to Chiang Mai and talked about Georgetown Festival and how he got budget at the time, at least, um, and how he was given a fairly free hand on what he puts on with the, and, and not just, cut, I mean, he's working very hard to include locals, but he's also working very hard to make it a, just an international world-class event. And it's very hard to get that kind of funding here it's very easy to get funding for a more um, uh, traditional cultural event. But then you have to ask, is that for tourists or is it genuine or is it, or, you know, how, how, how living culture it is. So there are lots of issues for, for, for us locally working. We do need the support from Central Thailand, from government, but then we also want to do the right kind of project. That's great. Thanks, Martin. Jare, would you like to comment on the question, please? Yes. That the way that Songkha Elite Trust do is a button, button up process. Yeah, like we do by own self and we try to find the supporting from the local people or something for support from CSR project from Cheplon Thailand, but not too much. Yes. Uh, we we work together with uh, Lang Siratana Pakan, the uh, Red Rai Mills owner. He support us the the office cost, uh, electric cost, something like that. But for the uh, centralized supporting, mostly is support passed through the uh, province provincial. Yes, it's difficult because uh, the centralized support by project, you must have the uh, project. To, uh, and you you may have you may you might have a uh, blueprint for construction something like that but for for our work when we we do like local people we have no plan but we think uh, this year maybe three three months we should do something and let people to join and talk together to share the idea after that we decide and the problem is we have no blueprint we have no the act uh, 
uh, the 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 cost. Then uh, we we try to uh, work together and get many uh, support thing from uh, maybe local people together and maybe uh, some company really really small scale company donation for for us. Yes. Thank you, Jerry. And, yeah. Sorry. Uh, and uh, if if we think uh, we we uh, work with the another another country like uh, Malaysia, we we have the model about the uh, Think City that they have offered to try about the uh, creative uh, work and support from, from government. We think maybe the CEA is the, the answer for Songkra and uh, CEA have planned gonna, gonna build the, the uh, CEA building in Songkra next two years. We hope to join with them and together with BTF Council. Yes. That, yeah, that's great. Thank you. I, I can see certainly the importance of both bottom up and top down kind of support and coming, bringing together to, to support these initiatives. Um, I'll invite uh, Nim and then we'll probably move on to the QA because I recognize that we're running short of time at the moment. Okay. okay. Uh, Actually, we start from the small group of people and be previously working with Bangkok Design Week. So we would like to create our just more sustainable for the urban. So our year round is happen. And we, we got the full funding from CEA because we would, uh, at first we would, would like to add this into Bangkok Design Week 2021. And that is like the initial initial funding for us to move on. And after our project is very was very success. So we got this this project brought brought us to another like say, other stakeholders like NIA or uh, National Innovative Agency because we work with the technology, we work with the uh, application. So they would like to fund us more about in 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 more tech in more innovative way. So and we got like the private funding from many company that they founded or they located in our area. So like we, and another way we got the volunteer from, from, from our neighborhood. So this is like a kind of co-creation, co-creation something. So I think it's very good start of us. That's great, thanks. Yeah. And it's wonderful to hear kind of the grassroots support as well as support from the CA. Um, just as a kind of roundup, there have been a few questions in the Q&A, but I think one question that probably will be a good one to, to end on is around um, what is your kind of intention to, to connect more regionally and connect with other hubs in the city in Southeast Asia, but also to the UK? So obviously this is a connecting event. So if you can share a few very briefly what your hopes for further connections with other hubs, that would be great. Um, I would invite... Martin, again, briefly, <laughs> one minute. How predictable. Okay, um, so uh, we've been working with British Council for, for almost since the beginning. Um, and um, some of the initiatives that we do, um, or how we do it, is born out of working with British Council. Uh, some projects, creative hubs, creative city connections. So we've been actively networking with other cities in Southeast Asia and also the UK on, on different projects. What's very interesting within Southeast Asia is that we learned about other cities, um, which otherwise people in Chiang Mai might not have looked at and they discovered what Bandung, what Cebu, what um, other cities in Southeast Asia have, rather than just Singapore and Hong Kong. So that was very interesting. Um, and to the, with the UK, we've um, regularly had um, designers and um, in others visiting us and working us, with us on, on projects. So, so I think this, um, um, particularly in this current time when we might be a little bit more disconnected, it's harder to travel. We can, we can connect this way, but we cannot then follow up easily or we couldn't for two years. Um, I think keeping this international outlook is very, very important. Uh, using the digital tools as well for certain things that probably will stay but um, looking forward to more real connections again to, to other hubs and cities and learn from each other because there's so much to learn. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jare, just short, 
response. Thank you. Yes, we hope to cooperate with uh, uh, about the best case, maybe compare with Songkhla, which, uh, which town is a similar site like Songkhla. We, we want to learn ab about the uh, creative, uh, creative way from, from them. And we hope to uh, cooperate with uh, research, research between uni universities. Uh, send our researcher or maybe invite the uh, researcher from uh, another country to join us and uh, learn together. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. And Nim. Yeah. I think even we live in like different cultures, but we are sharing the same essences of well-being or the good community. So I think the case studies from all the practical methods from the friends from around the world or in, in UK uh, could be the idea or we can adapt it to, to each other projects and get more closer to, to, the, to our community even we, we are from different contexts. That's a great name. I think Martin has one thing to just add if you want to. Surely. Yeah, I forgot to mention that as we speak, there's another event in Chiang Mai, um, and that's about um, creative festivals and a group of people trying to create a connection between Chiang Mai and the Edinburgh Arts Festival. So we're quite, quite excited about that, and there will be some people visiting from Edinburgh and um, see what we can spawn off here in Chiang Mai. So, and obviously British Council is involved in that. Great. Thank you, Martin. Um, we're up, to, uh, we're ending of our time is so short and I would love to find out, you know, a bit more with our speakers, but please do feel free to get in touch with them, interact, uh, uh, in, network with them on the Hopin platform. Um, there's so much more they can share and please do connect. Um, so I just want to say thank you very much for your questions. I'm sorry we, won't, we, was, we weren't able to answer all of them, but um, I hope you enjoyed the, the discussion and finding a bit more about the different creative hubs and districts in Thailand. And I'll hand you back over to Jay. Thank you very much, Joyce. And I would like to thank all the panelists for this very interesting discussion. Um, because we, uh, we don't have a lot of time, I would like to now proceed to the next uh, panel discussion, which is on arts as agents of change. It will be moderated by Kim Adolaya Huntakun, who is an independent curator with a focus on socially engaged arts. Kim will be joined by Kavita, a video artist, Sirasa, a music social enterprise founder, and Wela, a festival founder, who will bring you to explore the current art scene of Thailand where arts are making changes. So I would like to hand this over to Kim.
Greetings, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, and thank you, PJ, for introducing me at the beginning. I will be today's moderator for the arts um, as agents of change. Um, I will introduce myself briefly. Uh, my name is Adulaya Kim Hundrugul. I am an art curator and currently a PhD student at Gedai Tokyo. So today we have three key figures from Thailand's creative community. So let's meet our first panelist, um, Kun Dawita, a visual artist. So it is my turn to, um, to introduce myself. So, okay, so I'm Kuita, I'm a video and performance artist and based in Bangkok, Thailand. So my work, as you can see in my background, um, it is about um, focusing on the labor and labor expectation behind the fast consumption industries um, of mass production and how um, the laborers have been treated um, and dehumanized into tools and machines working repetitively nonstop as tools and machines. Um, and, and, and for example, this work here, as you can see, it's called knit. So knit is how I sort of turn my body, it's my one hour performance, when I turn my body into um, a needle with a in this huge human knitting machine where I use my um, all of my all parts of my body such as um, my legs um, my hands and especially my mouth in order to knit um, the white tube of, of fabric or you know that looks like a, a red spider web um, non-stop for, for one hour and um, and this sort of symbolizes how you know the labor has been treated as machines, and how every time that they come out to protest for um, their treatment, for their lower treatment, and for their um, for harassment and for um, um, the violence and and on lower wages, they've always been stopped and and, and muted, um, and their voice has been muted. So I would like to be you know the voice for them. Thank you very much. Um, and now Kun uh, Sirasa from Here and Found. Sadeha, everyone. Um, my name is Sirasa Bunmao. You can call me May. I'm the founder of Here and Found, a creative social enterprise based in Bangkok, Thailand. So Here and Found, we aim to erase the existence of discrimination against the indigenous people in Thailand, which account for 7 million people. And we want to create more understanding about the cultural diversity. So we dedicated to presenting indigenous voices worldwide through various forms of music and preserving cultural treasures for future generations. So from the first hand experience, I have found that the indigenous music is not only for entertainment, but it also a way to record and telling their stories uh, such as their way of life, local wisdom, or how they preserve the natural resources. So I believe that music will lead to a way of overcoming poverty, uplifting their well-being, and sustain the local culture. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, last but not least, Kun Wela from Le Art Fest. Good day and good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Wela from uh, the group called Payun for Us. I'm the core member of the group. Uh, our group created uh, around like four years ago. We aim to expand the art ecosystem from the cube box or uh, the cube, the white cube box, and also the museums to other place uh, because all of those space here in Thailand is really small and the society is really close. So we try to expand that ecosystem to other area in Thailand. And also we try to give them accessibility to, uh, for the community to access contemporary art uh, in other ways. So our project right now is the main project is called Le Art Fest, which we try to create the art city outside the big city of Thailand in the northeast part. So, uh, we try to make it as a, like a model that we can bring art and community come together and bring it into the daily lives of the people. That's the thing that we are working right now. Thank you very much. 
It's great. So um, for this panel, uh, I'd like to expand a little bit more on the concept of sustainable creative culture and actually what kind of role it plays um, as an agent of change. So as you said, your organization, I think you mentioned in one of our previous conversations, it started in 2018 as a social model. And today I believe here in Found is a registered foundation that creates revenue for indigenous musicians. Um, I'm curious, could you run us through this business model and perhaps uh, copyright issues and concerns? Right, um, thank you so much for that question. So. So here and found is a central platform of indigenous and folklore music. Um, in these three years, we have worked with 30 indigenous musicians around Thailand. So it's account for eight ethnic minority groups. And to we we work with we work closely with the musicians to co-build the music and story archive, um, both with both old and new uh, generations of the indigenous musicians. But then we also build the diverse connections as well. Like firstly, we connecting listeners through world music events in Bangkok. And secondly, we connect travelers through local music workshops and tourism programs. But with the COVID-19 situation, well, under the forbidden of organizing events. So we built the digital connections by connecting media creators from around the world through our online local stock music. So with this connection, the indigenous musicians earn more income from the music licensing because they own their copyrights and this become our focus right now. And in these three years of working, um, we have connected to more than 100,000 audiences around the world. And uh, the most important part is that 80% of them understand more about the value of cultural diversity why the indigenous musicians and performers earn, that, earn more than $12,000 from music. So um, I believe that these connections have uncovered indigenous voices and being able to create a new forms of relationships. And also in this coming year, we also planning to improve the online local stock music, which I learned so much through seeing the online music platforms or online music archive from, from the UK. So yeah, if anyone would like to connect with me or supporting us to expand online archive professionally, I'm very open for collaboration. Thank you. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. So it's such an interesting um, initiative. Um, and so now I'd like to direct to my next uh, curiosity to Kunwilala, your organization seemed to work extremely closely with local communities. Um, so was it difficult to explain this concept of circular creative community to the local community? And actually, uh, what were the key factors that you used to, to like expand their understanding on this topic? Yes, thank you so much, Kun Kim. Uh... Yeah, this is really critical question because uh your question I try I try to uh make it more simple by we you talk about the keyword the circular creative economy, but I will separate this keyword into creative cre creative and circular economy. Because if you're talking about a circular economy, the people in up country here in Thailand, they're quite familiar with these things because uh, when you talk about the economy itself, it's not, it's not talk about the business all the time. It not talks about the monetary exchange, but it's talk about the exchange. So you can exchange anything is economy, right? Okay, you, you can, I can give you a food that grew up in my, uh, in my home to the some mat bamboo material that grew up in your home or something like that. This kind of thing of, of always happen in the upcountry of Thailand. So that's why when we go there and talk about the circular economy, it's quite easy and quite familiar, familiar to, to them. But another thing about the wording creative, this is really critical and tricky. Okay, because of if you, if you like thinking about the creative city that happened here around Thailand, you always have an imagine of the people that this is like hipster types 
of activities. The people dress in very stylish and expensive brand. Go to the fancy cafes or fancy restaurant. They uh the pace of the thing like this like go all over the the media. So sometimes when you talk about the creative thing to the people in our country, they feel like they is like an alien. They feel alienated from them. It's quite far from uh the the way of life that they use. So. So it's quite hard if you're talking about this thing and then try to make people interesting in it because uh, I have to say that uh, we have a problem that the people from our country here in Thailand they feel like even they are the most portion of the people here but they always feel like they are minor than the city people yeah they feel like the lack of the knowledge they didn't know how world go right now or something like that so. Uh, it's hard it's hard to 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 think about it so you try you have to try you have to create a new understanding that creative can be down to earth can be everything in that daily, daily life so if you're thinking about the key success factors i thinking about the thing that we always use to work with the community is like it's sincerity yeah you have to be mm. sincere and and if you go there to talk about the benefit first it's going to be collab because uh, it's going to be become a business talk and mm. especially when the thing that we work right now we try to create a model of our city or creative city is me like uh okay when you say thing about the, the living in the city you didn't make money all the time 24 hours hours a day right yeah, so mm -hmm. we try to try to approach uh, this thing in other like factors, other dimension of life, other other part of life to the people so they can they can have an experience and embody themselves to the creative activity without thinking about making money, but try to create their happiness. So that's the thing that we work on. So it's kind of like really uh, uh, long-term uh, commitment and long-term operation that we implement to to work in the community this is really really important because the thing that you try to work on is like uh it's far from the context that they live they have no ideas but uh you have to create trust between them and you first and then they try to open their mind and try to know what to know more what kind of thing you are doing within their city <laughs> that's the thing that i work for Thank you very much. Um, that's so interesting, uh, you know, ha having to form a relationship first and trust and then, and also not make it into a, a money making uh, <laughs> model. Okay, thank you very much. So actually we've heard from two facilitators. Um, I'd like to switch the understanding a little bit to focus on, um, on a more individual base. So Kun Kawita, uh, as a contemporary artist in Thailand, we've heard a lot about cultural activities. Um, so your work is socially engaging as you um, described earlier. Um, I'm curious, is there any funding or support made available to you to help with your creative process? And if so, could you tell us a bit more about it? Yes, I think there are many fundings and, and support and especially financial support um, if, if you look for them. Um, like as I believe that art, art is for, for a social change. And so I must believe that I must connect and collaborate um, with everyone, not only in the art uh, world, but also taking my art outside the art world as well. So that's what I, that's, that's what I, that's what I believe. And also, uh, that what what how do you call it a powerful work? A powerful work is about the work that you know the audience would be um, able to um, access, relate, um, feel, and 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 sort of. Um, have a sense of understanding of, of what the work is, is talking about. And, and that's my purpose, you know, in order to raise that awareness. So once you do that, and then you have all these um, organizations, private institutions, public institutions from all around the world that, you know, see your work and see that, you know, the, the, the work is 
is um, has this message that can change society and is related to the context of, of their society. I think I made a, I made um, a series of work that is such a global issue. Um, where you know we live in the capitalism world of based on materialism society and so um of course there are the problems behind what we see um as illusions of 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 what we consume such as you know the labor work behind that and and therefore you know um i have received um thankfully um support um moral and financial support from you know governments um, around the world and especially private institutions and um, sometimes you know um, commissioning works with with companies uh, such as you know central for example that they thought that my work would raise a about um, consumerism and fast consumption and 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 how the way that we consume might are destroying the world. So, um, and research trips, for example, I have um, my representatives, uh, my gallery in Bangkok, Thailand, um, Nova Contemporary, who's supporting me. So uh, whenever I want to go to, you know, research field trips or field studies, I would um, ask for the fundings. Um, I have uh, my other representatives in Australia who helps me with my funding. So when I go for exhibitions and talks and um, all um, flights and accommodations, um, both Nova and, and um, my Australian representative are helping me with all of those as well. And yeah, so um, it's, um, so I think the art world has been fully supported me and also um, the world outside of the art world as well. So, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so I think we still have some few, a few minutes left before the Q and A. Um, I just want to circle back to Kun Sirasa a little bit. Um, you mentioned that uh, aside from uh, entertainment, um, the indigenous music is also about recording history and um, uh, memory. Uh, was, was was it difficult to? Um, try to uh, promote this side of indigenous music to the general audience? Like, and what, what were your uh, tactics, for example, to help push um, uh, this forward? Okay. So um, normally the cultural music sh um, shows or, or for listening, uh, it like for music show is usually happen at the traditional events or cultural festivals. And then, but somehow the new generation lost connection with it. Uh, um, this is like specifically in Thai context or their like their music, indigenous music, their works have been preserved in CDs or vinyls, which not many people listen from that anymore. So therefore we turn this into a more like fashionable way that lets the new generations connect with it easily. So such as we held the World Music Series event at the hostel in Ari areas, which um, many Thai urban and foreigners like travelers, um, like living in this area. And we designed a whole music exp experience to be like, to be um, easy to digest. Like um, we have like a screening that people can like having engaged with their music, something like that. Or we bring the travelers to village to listen to the music under the forest and learning about their way of life through creative workshops. And so what we do is that we trying to make it um, special or make it easy to digest and easy for the new generation to engage with it. And, but for the online platform that we do, we, um, because I'm also the sound designer and um, feel record this myself. So I'm using the music technology to helping um, them, the indigenous musicians to turn their works into a digital music. So they can have more opportunity on the online world. So this is how we um, 
tackle the challenges of the world today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Kunwela, you, uh, you mentioned that it's, it's very, it's a sensitive um, uh, uh, relationship building when you work with uh, the local communities. Could you tell us, give us an, an example or, or tell us a bit of a, like a, an anecdote, a touching story perhaps that uh, you've encountered? Um, when you were organizing these festivals, do you have something to share? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I have like a, a couple of story. I can show you two two short story. Uh, mm. In two thousand nineteen, we we create the art festival called Lo Afat Art Fest Volume Three in a small community nearby Chapaya River, uh, next uh, in around Kongsan areas, and and we create like one like very. And I would say it's like really intense uh, contemporary dance. And one like uh, one of the people in that community, they, she, she bring her family come to see that show. And she didn't understand the show at all. And then like she just see like the dancer, dance K-series and uh, all, all the sweat spread to out of the like salt factories and also like, but they, the dancer still keeps smiling all the time. And she felt like I, she didn't understand anything, but the, the thing that she saw make her cry. She, 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 she cried a lot because she felt like she can feel the sadness that come through from the dancers. And on that night, she come back uh, to, to, to his house and she, 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 she told us later that she's an, also her husband cannot sleep all night and try to thinking what really happened to them. And in the morning, when the morning come, she come to talk with our staff in the festival, ask us to explain about the meaning of the show. And at the end, she says to us, oh, this is the first time for her that she felt like the world is beyond making money or like raising the children. That's the thing that we quite in place that the people who like working like in the in the like the local restaurant feel like that and another mm. story it just happened oh. in during the lockdown in two different, yeah. <laughs> sorry we're running a little bit out of oh time. my god okay, okay. <laughs> uh, I'd we like can to skip quickly... that thing and you can <laughs> yeah you oh, can pass a, to what, other question yeah what a shame but just uh so we can wrap it up with kunka with uh perhaps um so uh like you said you know with your field research um you know, you, you work directly uh, about uh, the threats that we face as a global community. And I, I think you have a very unique platform, which is the fine art art stage. Um, I'm just curious about um, the reception that you received um, because it targets specific industries. Um, so how, what was that like? Uh, what was the feedback like? Well, I think, um... I think my um, my my main key is to be able to um, I think express my voice and my work in various platforms. So not only in um, exhibitions and museums um, in Thailand or all around the world, but also in public spaces. So such as you know sometimes I would um, showcase my work um, in billboards or screens. Or ads. So sometimes the, you know people see advertisements. Of, um, brands or like clothing brands for example um, and then uh, but there's like this video work of what's behind the scene um, of the fast fashion industry is like so how the laborers have been treated as tools and machines for example something like that it's something that I think um, would um, gain awareness from not only the, the audience who go to museums but everyone who um, you know in everyday life they they um they, they just drive past this billboard um there was this um gallery that the gallery project that i did um for um sometimes gallery night before this it was called the fairy gallery so i was um i was showing the video works inside um, the fairy 
um, the public ferry that crosses between Katian and and Taoyuan, um, for the public audience to feel, they feel like they're stuck in a boat, they see the work, and you know they start raising questions what it is about and 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 how it relate to their you know everyday life. So I feel that the because I've shown in various spaces, the reception or the, the feedback has been very, you know, but um, every time that I finish, um, for example, the performance, there would be a talk or discussion about what the work is about and how, you know, various audiences um, view the work and how they view um, the fast consumption and, and, and their consumption within the current, um, the current modern world. So, so I, I, I hope that um, the world is changing, you know, the trend of sustainability, um, ethical clothing, um, ethical labor, um, and, and being transparent is, is coming. Um, there's so many uh, applications that you can download so you can see what, what brands are ethical and, and sustainable. So, so I think the world is shaping into that way and, and, and not because of just art, but because of everyone who's raising their voice. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Um, uh, so many interesting points were discussed during this session. Um, what a shame we don't have more time. Uh, but thank you everyone for listening. Thank you all our panelists and thank you British Council for putting together an event like this. Um, I will now pass this on to PJ. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, everyone. A big thank you again to all the moderators and the panelists. I think we have had really interesting discussions here and um, really sorry we didn't have more time. But if you would like to um, stay connected with us, please connect to the speakers on Hopin or just drop me a line. And uh, with that, we have already come to an end of this Thailand session. So uh, I hope that you had enjoyed the session and have got some food for thoughts for tonight. Um, I would like to announce that uh, right after this, there will be another thematic session entitled Arts for All, where we explore the situation of arts and inclusion in Southeast Asia and see if arts is really for all. So I would like you to um, stay tuned for that. Um, don't miss the next session. So thank you very much once thank again, all the speakers. And um, yes, I'll see you um, in the next session. Thank you very much.